Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Marlboro Regional Chamber of Commerce Member Spotlight. My name is Rob Schlachter, and I am really excited about today's broadcast because it's very relevant. This is about financial planning tips in uncertain times, and I would think that there are no more uncertain times than what we're facing right now. So uh, we have um, some guests slated today that are subject matter experts in the field, and I am very pleased to welcome our first guest, uh, Simon Ellis. Simon, welcome from Bright Futures Financial. And uh, we're absolutely thrilled to have you because, uh, listen, we all need a little bit of counsel reassurance. So why don't we start out, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you and how you got started in the financial planning in general. Of course, of course. Thank you very much for having us here. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good to be on scene, and you're right, there's no shortage of things we could talk about right now. Um, I'm with Bright Future Financial. That's where uh, we're a small financial planning practice. We're out of Leominster, Mass. Uh, I'm a Marlboro resident. That's what brings me here. That's why I'm a member of this chamber. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love my community and want, want to give. And um, uh, As far as my background, uh, I started out in financial services 1996. So that's 26 years ago. So that's quite some time uh, to be around. I've seen a few cycles. Uh, we're in a cycle. Mm -hmm. um, I started with uh, Mass Financial Services, a mutual fund company downtown in Boston. I uh, spent some time at Fidelity Investments. So my early career was in the mutual fund business. Uh, from there, I, I, I gravitated into 401k planning. I was part of a team that headed up a couple billion dollars of assets there that we had to manage on a day-to-day -day basis for, uh, for other employers. Um, and then uh, I moved into the financial planning space in a true sense uh, in 2007 uh, with, a, with a Fortune 100 company. Uh, I, was, I was recruited into that, um, became a partner within that company, was a successful partner for 10 years, recruiting and developing other advisors, mm -hmm. uh, before finally saying, you know, let's get back to the crux of things. What's it all about? Uh, and, and that's being able to put people in a better position um, and, and help them achieve their goals. And so that's, uh, that's the present role, myself and my colleague, Mike Davis, over at Bright Future Financial. Great. So clearly we are in... Yeah, I think it's safe to say tumultuous times <laughs> with <laughs> turmoil. So from your perspective, a philosophy on uh, both from a, a small business perspective as well as people who may or may not have ever dealt with financial planners, talk a little bit about your philosophy and what you recommend to both business and consumer. Uh, I think a couple of things just reflexively is um, you have to plan. There's got to be a plan. Things don't just happen on their own. And so uh, if you're not working with a planner, you probably should. Um, there's concern out there, be it political, supply chain, um, interest rates. There's, every time you turn on the TV, you get the, uh, a notion that the sky's falling. Mm -hmm. And it's not, to, it's not to make light of it. There's a lot of real genuine issues out there right now. But with planning and working with the right advisor, that'll make all the difference in the world. Um, we've got to remember, these things are cyclical. They'll come and they'll go. This too shall pass. Our we, memories are short, right? And we've been mm -hmm. on a we've been on a good run for ten years prior to prior to these issues as of the last couple of years, right? Mm -hmm. So it's likely to stick around for a while, um, right. but it will pass. And uh, interestingly enough, you mentioned um, in, in one of the questions there, um, e even the political environment. You know, I, I advised a client years back, and this was uh, another presidential cycle, probably twelve years ago, and. Their focus was on who's coming and going, like that really matters. Mm -hmm. And my answer to that was, they're all going to come and go. It's what, what's your plan? When this person's in office, that person's in office, how do you get around these things uh, so it's advantageous? And the only way you're going to do that is working with a planner. Right. So let, let's uh, dive in a little bit on that. Uh, mm -hmm. As far as your practice is concerned, what makes yours unique? And what would you say the biggest misconception of having a financial planner is? Almost exclusively, we deal with small business owners and the individuals connected to those businesses. That's our market. These are the people we deal with. That's also the lifeblood of our community. And we live and work in our community. So we understand what people's needs are and we understand how to put them in a better position. I think some of the misconceptions are 
how much does it cost to have an advisor? What kind of advice can they really give me? Um, who do I trust? Uh, these are basic things that would prevent somebody from reaching out. Um, most of our business is referral business, so it comes in as trusted business, usually from other advisors. Um, but I think it's um, it, it's also important to note that um, how much does it cost to not get the advice is really what I would answer with that. So, you know, people, people are concerned about costs and whether or not they're, you know, they, they can afford to pay for it. Or does it even apply to them in some cases? Most individuals walking around don't have a financial advisor or a financial planner. They think that's for people with a lot of money. Well, my, my thing to you is, if that's the case, everybody's trying to get ahead. Everybody's got similar needs. The roadmap to how you get there could be very different, but you've got to be able to plot it out and plan it. Right. So what would your philosophy be for people who are tuning in, whether they own business or they're considering selecting or getting engaged with a financial planner? What's the philosophy on how you should make that selection? Well, I think there's a um, first foremost, most people are looking for qualification. They're looking for time served. They're looking for experience. Sometimes they're looking for name brand. Um, I think the first thing that you ought to be looking for when, when you're talking to somebody who's a, who's a potential advisor for you is, uh, do they listen? Um, that gets to the root cause of every problem. You've got to be able to listen to understand what the problem is. There's, there's a lot of people out there that have quick solutions to things. And uh, you, you've also got to, be, got to be willing to spend the time on things. Get down to, uh, get into a real conversation, spend the time, drill deep. It's got to be worth it to you too, right? And, uh, and the only way you're going to get there is, 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 is good questions and a lot of listening. I, from my perspective, I, I need to know everything uh, in, in order to put a good plan together and give a recommendation. Not just piecemeal bits and, of, of this and a little bit of that. It's like, what's the big picture? How, how, do, how, how do we get there? And fundamentally, why is that important to you? Mm -hmm. You know, you feel differently about it than other people might feel about it, even though at first blush it might appear similar. Right. right? So I think, I think some of that. And um, what else might I tell you? Um, also to set expectations for people. You know, wh wh where are you both coming in at? Ask questions about how much do things cost? Uh, what are different service models if you have service models? Uh, what's the, you know, the scope and depth of the problem? Do you need a full-on financial plan as a working living document? Or do you just need certain areas addressed? Right, and you like would that. you would offer free consultations for folks who are interested. Is That's that right. Accurate? I mean, it's a screening process, ultimately okay. for both parties, right? You want to make sure it's a... a our business is a relationship business, and we want to make sure that we're not just there um, serving transactional transactional needs. When we're putting a plan together for somebody, we're there for the long haul, and, uh, and things will change, and you will need to make adjustments to your plan. Well, we're in a position to be able to do that because we already know you, we have a relationship with you, and um, you know, and, that, and, that, and that's going to lend itself to success overall in the long term. Like I say, things come and go, right? Right. Um, your, your plan should be a living, breathing document, not necessarily something you did once and then and set it and forget it. Right. That, that's never going to work. Okay. So you did mention earlier that uh, you moved into Marlboro, you want to get involved in the community, mm -hmm. and then um, recently you decided to join the Regional Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. you know, what was your rationale for that, and you know, how do you plan on leveraging the chamber? Well, I mean, the chamber itself, right? It's it's all business owners. These are these are essentially my constituents, my potential clients. They're also people I can help in other ways. You know, so um, just, I love networking. I, I love being around uh, other business owners. Um, I, I like to hear other perspective. You know, you, you're going to learn and grow from other perspective, not just living in your own bubble. Um, but it's also it, it ties back to the community. It really does for me. Is you know. Small business is, is the lifeblood of the community. There's more small business in the United States driving everything than there are big corporations. Most people work for small business. If we step out of this building and walk around town, there's a thousand small businesses, each with employees, each with families. If we're doing well there in that space and I can impact that positively in terms of just uh, economic development and growth, um, the whole community does well. Gotcha. Well, we really appreciate your perspective on that mm -hmm. uh, and joining us today. And, you know, obviously I think it gives some people uh, a little bit of uh, confidence and hope. I guess we'll leave it. Any hot tips you have for us? <laughs> uh, the, the, I'd say by law. By right? law. People right now are jittery, naturally. Yes. Um, that's where people are prone to making mistakes. If you're, if you're, if you're making a decision based on emotion, you really ought to have somebody that can separate fact from emotion. 
and make logical decisions. Every study shows it, that if you're acting on emotion, uh, when it comes to financial stuff, you're most likely going to mess it up. Right. Good. Don't, don't do it. Buy low, sell high, not All the right. other way around. Excellent. Well, <laughs> we appreciate you joining us this yeah, morning. It was a pleasure much. having you. Likewise. Thank Right, so continuing with our financial tips in these uncertain times is really great to get uh, perspectives. And I would uh, like to introduce you all to Chris Shea, who is a financial advisor for BPS Financial Services. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Rob. Happy so to very, very timely uh, to have this particular uh, episode going. Uh, obviously, uh, we advised everybody that uh, I would, say times are tumultuous at best for people worried about their finances and their money. Yep. So um, first thing we'd like to do is just have you take us through your background and how you got into the field of financial advising. I got into it, I had been doing project management work and then I started doing project management work at a financial services company out in California. And they were launching this product, this technology on trading to help advisors do their jobs better. And I became the subject matter expert on it. That led me to a consulting role, which I did consulting for other advisors for nine years. Uh, in the, after a couple of years, I started doing consultative work on financial planning software. So I would actually go in and help advisors that were CFPs, CFAs, do the financial planning with the software technology and help them improve upon that. Then about four years ago, I decided to go out on my own and leave the consulting world because I got tired of being on an airplane five days a week and uh, never seeing my daughter and wanted to see more of her. So I, uh, I moved into doing what I had been teaching people to do after being doing it for, for nine years. Excellent. Excellent. So um, on this subject, obviously, since the pandemic... You have world conflict, you have inflation, you have the Fed uh, moving interest rates, creating uncertainty, panic. Tell us a little bit about, as a financial advisor, your philosophy on telling both small businesses as well as consumers thinking about how to protect their assets and their money. What's your philosophy from where you sit? First thing to do right now, take a deep breath. Okay. Do not panic. History is our best teacher in this. And if you've held on to your investments from pre-pandemic till now, my recommendation would be not do anything at all. One of the big lessons from the 2000s, we had that big dot-com bubble, the bursts, the 2008 housing crisis, a lot of mutual funds had really productive and positive years in those, in that decade. Yet individual investors had negative returns in the same mutual funds that had very positive returns. And the reason for that was people panicked. They sold when the market started to go down. If you're in a position and you're 10 years from retirement, start pumping more money into your retirement account because unless you sold off in March, April of this year, you're down a lot, you're freaking out. But again, history shows us it will go back up. And if you sell out now, you're going to lose out on the gains. You lost out already because it's down. Don't be short-sighted. And I think the key word that you used there was emotional. Money is all about emotions. But that's why I hire a financial advisor to help take that emotion away from you mm -hmm. so that you can say, oh, these are the facts. My feelings are X, and believe me, my money's down too in my investments, but I am fully aware that in 10, 15 years, when I need it, actually, it will most likely be back up. Okay. All right, so that's that's an interesting perspective. So give us a, a little bit of a sense of since you got into the business of advising, how does the BPS philosophy 
of what you do with potential clients and existing clients differentiate from other advisors out there? One of the last things I usually talk about with people is their money and their investments. The first things that I always talk to people about are, what do you want to do with your life, right? I talk about this retirement with people all the time. You had a job before this. You're now part of the chamber, the leadership. When you retire, you're going to go to a cocktail party and people are going to say, Rob, tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, oh, I did this in my past, this in my past, this in my past, now I'm retired. Well, you've got to find your self-identity as part of retirement. So you've got to prep for that. You've got to think about what does Rob actually want to do now that I'm not working every day? You know, who am I going to have my personal relationships with? Mm -hmm. Who am I going to be social with? Am I going to stay being going to, to community events? How's my health and nutrition? What is my life going to look like? And then after that, you figure out how you're going to pay for it all. Right. Because if you don't know how you're going to live, you're really, the money's immaterial. Right? I mean, my mother passed away a year and a half ago. She had more money than she knew what to do with. But she worked right up almost to her death because she hadn't figured out anything to do. She loved working, but she hadn't gone that path of what's next. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was semi-retired. She was a real estate agent, and she worked on a boat three days a week, four days a week, five days a week. So she was semi-retired, but she was still working. Mm -hmm. Her entire identity was wrapped up in being a realtor and being part of the community. And that's what she did right till the end. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, describe to us a little bit about, what about for folks who aren't even necessarily thinking about retirement, but have not, selected or even considered trusting somebody to advise them on their money because they think the fees are too high? What, what, what counsel do you have for people thinking about getting engaged with an advisor? First thing, ask them for their fiduciary. What that means is they've got, the fiduciary has to do what's in the client's best interest, regardless of how they get paid. The next question is, ask about registrations. A lot of people are using the term financial advisor, but they can't invest in stocks. They can't invest in ETFs, which are another vehicle in the stock market. All they can do is maybe mutual funds or insurance products, which are all fine and wonderful. But in order for someone to give you the best service as a client, they've got to have open access to all the investment products. And if they don't have that, then they're limited in what they can do, which is limited on what's benefit for you. And that's also going to change how they get paid. They should also tell you how you're going to get paid, right? They should be very transparent and not hide behind the fact that they're going to get paid to help you. What the studies show is that usually people that have a financial advisor wind up in a much better place financially than they would have otherwise. Again, I'm going to reference my mother. She had a financial advisor 30, 40 years ago, and she wound up saving a lot of money that she would have otherwise just spent because she sat down and talked with them. Mm -hmm. And through that conversation with them, realized, oh, I can put money into a SEP IRA in her case because she's self-employed. This is what I can put my money into. This is what it's going to look like in the future. Oh, now I'm set. I don't have to worry about money ever again. Once she learned how money works, she didn't worry about money again. Right. But until somebody wor learns how money works, all they're chasing is a paycheck to get the better lifestyle right. instead of what they actually want. You right. don't need the bigger house. You don't necessarily want that. That might be the American dream, but it might not be your dream. I mm -hmm. know what you want. So clearly, if folks are interested in discussing this with you, they can come in and have a consultation with no obligation, correct? Yeah. And I can do it via Zoom if they want to do it remotely as well. I know that some people are still COVID scared right. and when they with health things. Mm -hmm. I've been working on a computer. I did my consulting work all by a computer for nine years, a lot of it. So I'm perfectly happy to get on a Zoom call or drive out to your house or meet at a Starbucks. The first meeting, actually, you don't even have to give me your exact 
information in terms of how much money you have. Okay. I'll just walk through the process, show you what I do, show you that there's a thing called a Monte Carlo simulation that shows a probability of success. And all I really need is the birth year of you and show you kind of what the process is. Because it's not about the first time talking to an advisor, giving them all your information and feeling like, oh, I've got to get an answer today. It's, does the process work? If the advisor's not asking you more questions about your life and what you want to do, and they're more telling you about how they're going to help you, you probably got the wrong person. Mm -hmm. It should be more about, this is what I do. Okay, what do you think about this? What are your thoughts about this? Because if they're not learning about you, they're just managing your money, which Good is point. the easiest part to do. Good point. So you Thanks. became a, um, a member of the chamber recently yep. and jumped right in and trying to assist people yep. in benefits and 401k plans, et cetera. Um, what made you join the chamber and what, uh, what benefits are you seeing by being engaged as an advisor? Well, what uh, led me to join was the board and the leadership. They had a vision that a chamber should be more than just networking and we have a website, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're offering the 401k program that came out. There's a lot of other packages that the chamber offers in terms of benefits to, to small businesses. Take advantage of them. That's what a chamber actually is supposed to be doing is helping all the members be better with what they do. There's a very robust services that all the businesses are offering to other chamber members at discounts. Take advantage of that. Right. All those things are benefits that are extraordinarily helpful to all the members. One of the things I did when I came on is I said, okay, if anybody's a chamber member and I do a retirement plan with them, I'm going to do it for 50% of my fee. That's Again, awesome. that's another benefit, whether you go through the chamber 401k program or you're Use another one. I think the chamber one's a great one that uh, can help everybody can't out. Can help, but compare that uh, shopping might help. Exactly, right. shopping. So I, that's the reason why I joined is because the leadership I felt had the chamber going in the right direction to benefit everyone, which is ultimately, you know, what everyone wants. Good to hear. Good to hear. Well, we really appreciate your perspective, and and we hope today that you have gotten a little bit of insight for folks who might be uncertain or have never used uh, advisors uh, before financially. When times get challenging like this, our advice is take advantage of our subject matter experts and try and take that deep breath and relax because obviously it's going to be cyclical. And we appreciate you joining us uh, for the, this session. Chris, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks, Thanks for Rob. coming on. And have a great day.